I'm making that full screen. So, um, well, it's great to be back. Um, and I'm quite excited to sort of present the, uh, the SciTunes project because um, it's really been a kind of a, a big step forward in a way in the work that I've been doing in putting in, in bringing science uh, through song. I've, I, I think both times I presented at Voices before, it was on doing it in more of a public engagement uh, setting. And this is very much classroom setting. Um, so it's quite nice to add to everything that you guys have um, done before. So um, really what I'm, well, just to give you a background in what I do, I, um, I have a background in singing science, but then I became a science teacher and now I'm doing a PhD in um, using in engagement uh, in classroom engagement. So, um, which is nice. Uh, although it's not to do with uh, song, um, that is still uh, just uh, what I do as my passion, um, more than anything else. Um, so, um, so I was very lucky to be given some funding by the Stephen Hawking Foundation um, to produce some music videos about physics, high school physics. Um, and um, I've sort of more or less used it to set up a, um, uh, an organization called SciTunes. And the, the missions of SciTunes is to get as much of the curriculum um, uh, in songs. So the songs are directly linked to the curriculum. And the idea is that teachers can use the songs alongside schemes of work in the classroom. The other, another part of the mission is that every resource that um, SciTunes creates is free for the teachers and students. And that's because I've got a strong um, uh, desire for, to, to use this uh, uh, to promote equity um, in science education. Um, the other thing at the heart of this is that I want all of the music videos and the song recordings to be high quality. I want them to all sound and look professional. Um, and finally, and I would really like all of um, all the music videos that I create through SciTunes to have really strong classroom resources. And I'll talk through about what we developed through the funding. Um, so I, I really thought of this funding um, from Stephen Hawking Foundation as, um, uh, as, as funding a pilot project to see if SciTunes works, if it's something that's worth doing. Um, and so what we were able to create with the funding was five music videos, um, all the accompanying resources, build a website, SciTunes.org. Um, and it was very important for me to integrate some research into this, partly because of um, uh, my, my research background as well. Um, so I did, I mean, most of the background, yeah, so I'll talk about it in a minute. And then finally, I wanted to do um, an evaluation, a, a sort of as solid an evaluation as the, as the funding would allow. Um, anyone who's made uh, professional music videos knows that the £25,000 that we got given, it was very generous, but it doesn't actually go very far. So we really um, stretched ourselves um, as far as possible to make this happen. So in terms of background research, I did a literature review, um, which quite honestly, um, most of it came through um, stuff um, from the Voices website and, and uh, Voices researchers. Um, and, but I also ran focus groups with um, lots of school kids from three different schools um, to really think about what are the types of music videos they would watch and want their teachers to use in the classroom. Um, and then finally, I um, did a, um, I, uh, oh, hang on, there we go. I did some teacher interviews. So I asked teachers what would be the most useful things, uh, resources for them to have to accompany it. So it was, it was very useful for not only guiding the project, but actually kind of getting a feel for, you know, I think often we make these music videos and we know they're really good, but actually we can be a bit more, um, direct about how we're making them. So in terms of the videos, I got, well, I wrote all the songs by taking the, the I mean, I don't know how it works in the US, but um, in the UK, what we have is we have exam boards that write specific curriculums that they are going to test um, students on in exams. So I took those um, specifications 
and I took all the learning objectives and I turned them into lyrics. Um, honestly, the lyrics are fairly dry but they rhyme and they're in fun songs, fun pop songs. Um, but I got all of the lyrics checked by the Institute of Physics to make sure I was teaching it in the, the best way. Um, I got the videos made by a professional company called Cosmic Shambles Network that create a lot of science entertainment content. Um, we found from the research that it's really important to have a person singing where you have a face in the video rather than just images or animation. Um, almost all respondents said they wanted to be able to see the lyrics, although we did make them um, optional on, on YouTube because um, you know it, people, it, we can give people the choice over that. Um, it came out that it was really important to have animations to show unobservable phenomena. Um, I think that's really important um, because, particularly in physics, because the unobservable stuff is it's hard to imagine, but it's really easy to draw. Um, but anyone, uh, but of course, animation is very time consuming and very expensive. And um, this sort of slightly clunky animation that you can see behind me, I ended up doing myself. We did it very cheaply, um, but it worked. Funnily enough, this electricity video has been the most popular, um, even though it's the, it was the cheapest one to make. Um, we found that actually students really wanted pop music, it's the most accessible music for them, so I took famous pop tunes and I pastiched them. Um, I didn't, I didn't um, use the, the tunes because I'm very aware of sort of copyright um, stuff, so I, I wrote songs that were very similar to them. And um, finally, um, the students fed back that as long as they're really easily available on YouTube or Spotify, um, then they're accessible, they can be accessed for free. So, um, so that's what we did. So you can find all of our videos on YouTube and all of the songs on Spotify. Um, what were the resources we created? So um, part of this came from, from some research from Voices Network and some came from talking to teachers, but fill in the blanks um, as a way to learn lyrics. So I, I deleted keywords. So, and on the back of the, of the um, worksheet, you had, you had the keywords listed in the wrong order. Um, and you also had clues for each missing word, there was a definition. So it was a really good opportunity for students to learn definitions. Um, there was plenty of scaffolding there for the students who, who struggled more with the exercise. And as they go through, they are learning the lyrics. Um, now, you might see on there, there's also an extra exercise for when they finished, and it was a way to encourage sort of a constructivist um, aspect. And I think um, uh, this was being discussed in, in the opening talk. Um, it, it's really important for students to not just learn lyrics, but to discuss the meaning of them. And so the, the, the exercise would say, you know, um, so underline the lines that are discussing, say, um, an application of the science or um, an explanation of the science. And it really got students to discuss and engage um, with the learning and, and, have, and it encouraged deep learning. Um, the teachers really loved this exercise. Teachers always want a multiple choice quiz. I'm not sure why, I mean, but we provide them anyway. They're, they're useful, but not particularly um, exciting, but we did them. Um, we also produce lyric chord sheets so that students and, or teachers can learn the songs, sing them themselves. But we also did karaoke versions so that people who aren't good at music can just put them on and encourage students to write their own lyrics about the bits of the curriculum that um, were a little bit harder and that we weren't able to fit in. And finally, the other resource that I felt was really important was some very quick tips for teachers on how to use songs in the classroom. And so all of these are available um, on, on sidetunes.org um, or on my blog and my website, my personal website. Um, and then finally, the evaluation, which I guess for you is the important bit. And um, what did I find? Well, I went round to lots of schools and delivered a show that had the, um, had the songs in. Overall, I was able to get feedback from about nearly, from nearly 700 students. 
Um, I also interviewed a student in depth. I spoke to, I think about 20 to 25 teachers. Um, and I also taught a number of lessons using the resources myself. So what did we find? We found that 67% of students said they wanted their teachers to use SciTunes videos in their lessons, compared with only 13% who didn't. You can't expect all kids to like songs. I think this is one thing I've learned using songs in the classroom. But I think 67% saying they want it is really good because if you said, how many of you want a test in the classroom? Or how many of you want to do work from the textbook? You won't get that percentage. Um, um, so I found that the videos are very much aimed at 13 to 16 year olds. The younger students in that age group were, they thought more than anyone else and more than the older kids that they really helped with learning but they were just as likely to enjoy, um, but the older students were just as likely to enjoy having the songs or want the songs in the classroom. They just didn't see them as so central to learning. Um, so we found that, I found that the, um, the songs were more appealing than conventional pedagogy to students who didn't like science lessons. So it wasn't that, uh, you know, students who didn't like science lessons weren't more likely to enjoy the show or the songs, but they were far more likely to want them in the classroom um, uh, than, um, as, which, which was really useful. It, sh it shows that um, they appeal to those who don't normally get on with conventional pedagogy. Um, and that's really who I'm trying to reach with these songs. Um, and then finally, um, th and this was my sort of my favorite finding, there was no gender divide between those who wanted the videos in the lessons and those who didn't. Now, normally physics appeals more to boys than girls, physics videos, music videos appeal equally. So this is more equitable. Um, and so that's, that's me. Um, and yeah, feel free to visit SciTunes.org or JohnnyBelina.com. Look up the SciTunes videos on YouTube. Um, and I hope you enjoy them. And now I will um, Thank stop. Thanks, my share. Johnny.